So about just uh, about 7.30 a.m. Uh, as we're starting our day, a lot of us, you know, today was one of those days we didn't have time to have breakfast or anything. We're kind of jumping into paperwork. We have meetings. We have a class. Um, we have back-to-back -back calls come in. We had a four-car crash on the tollway, uh, which sent uh, a big group of uh, apparatus out to an engine truck, battalion chief, and ambulance. Uh, and at the same time, an ambulance call came into another district, uh, which sent an engine and, a, and an ambulance. Uh, and this is one of those clear cases where why we roll a fire apparatus with all of our ambulances and ambulance calls. Number one, on the tollway. Uh, why so many vehicles go? Well, number one, is it an extrication? Is that needed? Is the vehicle dropped fuel? Is there a fire? Or do they just need that fire apparatus to keep a safe haven for that ambulance to work to properly assess patients and package patients and po properly transport. And especially during the morning or evening rush hours, people are in a very big hurry to get to where they want to get to. And on the tollways, they're driving at an unusual high rate of speed. Um, we've talked to state troopers who have told us that in today's society, unless they're doing 75 miles an hour, they're not keeping up with traffic. That's pretty fast. And when they're flying by in an accident scene, when you're standing still, it's very dangerous. That's why we need this apparatus there. We need the apparatus to be able to, to properly place themselves to secure a safe perimeter for us to work within. On the flip side of that, we went also dispatched to a medical call. And on that medical call was to District 5. We rolled this engine to go with the ambulance. That did multiple things. It put a minimum of at least three paramedics, two from the ambulance, one from the engine on the scene. In this case, we ended up with five paramedics, which is excellent, because if the call is very serious, the more hands of the higher trained skill, the better. In addition, when we got there, this is one of those cases where the elderly gentleman left the facility and was sitting outside and called 911 from his own phone. He never alerted the facility that he was calling 911 and followed the process. So they did not know. So his history and his documentation, the information that we had for him, normally from them, we didn't have. So by our being able to have multiple people that we can address the patient with the two paramedics with an extra set of hands, and as well as the officer and the other paramedic, were able to go inside and actually get the medical history and documentation and allow the facility to know that we're treating his patient and taking him to the hospital. This chart lists every apparatus as well as every vehicle within the Lyle Woodridge Fire District. The chart tells us when each vehicle is due for their weekly check. Our weekly checks are very thorough. We cover every aspect of the vehicle. We test every piece of equipment, running it thoroughly. We clean out every compartment that they're stored in. We check every light, every tire gets checked, all the fluids. We make sure that that vehicle has everything written up to our maintenance division so that it's always in perfect running order. This is an accumulation of our daily activity. A thorough daily, taking proper care of our station, and an intense weekly is really taking pride in our department and our job. In addition to testing all the equipment and cleaning everything that the rig carries, we need to make sure that the operation of the vehicle itself is sufficient. Today, it's ladder 51. We're gonna raise the main, make sure that we can walk the ladder without any deficiencies. We're gonna make sure that all the safety factors are in place. We're gonna ensure that that rig is ready to go if and when it's called to duty. Part of living for 24 hours at the firehouse is eating at the firehouse. And I know that there's a long history and tradition of firehouse meals, and we are no exception. We collect the money each morning, and at some point throughout the day, we go shopping. We choose to shop within the community of our still district. 
This works out for several reasons. First, it gets us into the community. Second, we are helping out local businesses. And third, if an emergency call comes in, we can drop whatever we are doing and respond.